Hello everyone, I'm Extra Cheesy 87 and this is Let's Play Trails of Cold Steel 4 Part 86. In the previous video we made our way to the deck of the Pandagruel where we did our quadruple boss fights and won easily because we're possibly the greatest to have ever done it. Yeah, but otherwise I'd say we're at a stalemate here. Are we? Are we? <sighs> These guys are a real pain in the ass. It makes for a killer photo op, though. These snaps are like gold! What? You're about They've to taken die. taken countermeasures to ensure the Merkaba wouldn't be able to act. How? So it seems. With all these guns trained on us, we'd end up taking too much concentrated fire. Okay. But, like, guys, what if you embraced your inner Kevin and shot them with a beam of pure fucking energy? <laughs> Maybe we can just shoot down one of theirs. I'm afraid that's not an option. They'd simply use it against us. Agreed. Well, that's fair. They'd only spin it as a declaration of war. But like, the war of war, I mean, I guess nobody would know that though. They're not official government ships. The Erebonian Intelligence Division is poised and ready to flood the world with misinformation. All they need is an excuse. Then the Scarecrow's already at work. I'd expect no less from Osborne's right-hand man. We'll have to count on Richard Damn. and the others to stay. Rufus them off. on Suicide Watch? Indeed. Lecter, how did this happen? Because he's got no values. Looks like just getting them to their ships wasn't enough. Brigadier General Bardius, shouldn't we go help them? If Zephyr's out there, I should be too. This is the perfect chance for me to knock some sense back into George. No. No. I need all of you to stand down. It seems your worst case scenario is upon us. I'm afraid so. M Mildine? No, you don't mean... Major activity on the Glorious. There's something massive deploying on deck. Oh no! I knew it. Well, you know, honestly, I think about it. No way. Like, who gives a shit if they spin it as a declaration of war? Like, it just, at worst case scenario, it, like, I guess it accelerates the time frame, but, like, everyone's already agreed that we're going to fucking war. Uh, ions? Three of them. They look a little different from the ones we saw in Crossbow. Like, I don't know. If the choices are let the diplomats get models. blown up, or... They're coming blow up enemy airships and then have to start the war earlier? It seems like it was a very ah! clear option. Remember your orders! Hold the line! So, uh, guys, learning to... <laughs> Shoot a beam of pure energy would be pretty cool you right about now. Easy. Take this. Watch out. All ships, evasive maneuvers. Hitting them with the just dodge. <sighs> Cassius on his way to be a Pokemon trainer. <laughs> if he can just keep up the pressure. Damn it. <laughs> Gaius, Rosine. Shit. Don't tell me. It's coming. And then he can't make it. He, he miscalculated the jump and he ends crashing into fucking the mountains. The end. Oh. Good thing we don't have like multiple Divine Knights or nothing. Oh, a little flashy for my taste, but not bad. Oh, come on. This is just overkill. <laughs> what magnificent power. Even greater than the Empire's Divine Knights! Really? Ooh, nice one, Lady Belle! 
I guess that creepy doll obsession of yours makes you pretty good at controlling ions, huh? Why, naturally. A marionette is a marionette, no matter the size. Instructor! So you're just Are lucky you we're not in? slurping up your soul? Yeah. I'll leave everything else to you. Heed my call. Valimar! Come! Or Dean! Of course. Those are divine knights? They're even more impressive than I imagined. Ah, finally bringing out your ace in the hole, huh? Well, However, really, it's Lloyd? Accounted for this. Lloyd's the real uh, divine knight destroyer? Testarosa! Or mech destroyer? Come, Zector! Oh, yeah, I forgot Rector was here. <laughs> T two more of them? The Vermilion and Palatinate Knights. I mean, that should definitely be more of a fair fight. Prince Cedric. You sure you're up for this, old man? Well, then. Since we have this chance, how about we start the rivalries right here and now? Hey. Cool your jets there, little prince. Doesn't count if we're not in a shrine. Says who? The Ion Gamma. Seeing it from the other side of the battlefield, it's overwhelming. Having second thoughts? I really do pity you, Duvali. Hopefully you see now that you've bitten off more than you can chew. Imagine being like such a loser that you have no values and only just do whatever some other lady tells you to do. Cringe. Unfortunately. The situation will only get worse for you from here on. Damn it, on our six! <laughs> Check and mate! They've returned. Damn, this puts us in a real bind. Does it? I mean, I still think we're kind of fine. I do like that it's at least an excuse for everyone to asses, everyone. not be standing around. Hold on, guys. We're coming for you. Let's find our way up to the deck. I can teleport us there. Hold on. No, that won't be necessary. We have one final landing craft left on board. With it, you will make your escape, along with Her Highness. That seems kind of, like, not smart. I'll head to the deck. Be sure to recover Schwarzer and the others when the chance strikes. I mean, it seems like overkill to send that many people just to escort Alfin who's not in any danger, really. But that would mean leaving you behind. Just tell us, Muse, what are you trying to do here? Lady Mildine accounted for this, should things go south. And as it so happens, oh, are they gonna blow everything the went integral? just as she predicted. That seems kind of like a little overkill as well, but... This is our contingency plan. All we're doing is putting it into play. Everyone. It's been my pleasure to know each and every one of you. Oh, fuck off. I ask that you give Instructor Reen and the rest of Class 7 my deepest regards. You're just like a unit's not here to slap the shit out of you. You say? What are you saying? You intend to die here. Is that it? We don't wish to die here. Actually, no, I'm just being dramatic. There's autopilot, don't I? <laughs> like... It will soon plot a course for the Crimson Arc. Ramming speed. There'll be no getting away for them, given the distance. That's crazy. Even if you do take them down, an impact that massive, it, it would blow you to pieces. Besides, this is the flagship of the Viceland army. You can't just give it up. And what of Mil Mirage? How do you expect it to go on if we lose all three of you? Not to worry. Mule Mirage was set in motion the moment Lieutenant General Bright was named Supreme Commander. The Viceland Army's core forces need only await his orders, and I suspect Vita will come to their aid as well. We're fully aware of how heavy a blow sacrificing this ship will be, but if it allows us to take down the Crimson Ark in turn, then as far as exchanges go, there are far worse moves to play. You say, Principal Le Guin. I mean, it still seems like kind of like a bad fucking deal. But why? Meldine. 
No, Muse. Because I mean, because you have so many less like super airships, each one of yours is like more important, so you can't accept a one for one trade. What reason is there for you to throw your life away as well? It's only right that the one responsible for a plan that will kill millions joins them in death. Well, like, no. I mean, yes, but also no is kind of dumb. Because you killing yourself, like, doesn't do anything other than add fake drama because we're gonna pretend that the game would ever actually kill off Muse. I long ago decided to stand my ground with the generals, should it come to this. Though in truth, perhaps I'm simply not strong enough to bear all that grief. <sighs> Muse, You really... <sighs> As the Supreme Commander of the Viceland Army, I order you to evacuate this ship immediately. I mean, it just seems like kind of like a cowardly Notify decision. Notify all crew members. Prepare to execute If I'm being Plan honest, D. like, it seems like As fate, wish. Valor. Commence Plan D for the glory of the Viceland Army. Like, you're just telling yourself that, like, killing, yes, my lord. you know, letting yourself die here is going to be easier yes, than dealing highness. with the actual consequences of your actions. Like, the landing craft is in the hold directly below. Make your way to the elevator. For the sake at of once. the argument, like we assume. Or else, goddess be my witness, I will cut you down right where you stand. <laughs> Shit. Like, Muse is as smart as she you is. No she obviously would save more lives by being alive. Actually, and being able to help. I don't think we have to go at all. Huh? Kia? What do you mean? She's exactly right. It's the old man. Mr. Bright. Suspend plan D until further notice. This course of action has already been discussed. I was under the impression we'd come to an agreement. Indeed. You truly are a remarkable young woman, capable of influencing the very fate of the world itself. But it would seem both of us failed to give credit where credit was due. Namely, to the potential of the third path and the wings which light its way. Did you just say wings? But that would mean... Uh, There's only one thing in Erebonia that comes to mind. Is that what Vita's been yeah. off doing? They're coming! Uh, I recognize that sound! Hmm. Wait, isn't that... Now what? <sighs> it's getting closer. Another enemy airship? No. That ship, it's... Confirm visual on enemy strike force. Three ion units also confirmed. Yeah, it's kind of cool that Major Michael's Breaking here. into combat airspace. Oh, I am Ready really to execute plan 07. Then let us tarry no longer. Landing party, are you prepared? <sighs> that we are. You can just leave the rest to us. We shall take care of things from here on out. <laughs> to think I get to bear witness to such a dramatic scene firsthand. <laughs> Such are the benefits that come with our roles on this stage. Let's get to it already. Been a long time since I had the chance to get a little wild. I'm just kind of in. I don't know. I mean, I knew what was going to happen, Attention, right? Attention, all crew. Today Obviously, marks the day of our maiden voyage. I still what a fucking it hate it. It's even this more grand insulting. There is no place for confinement. Let us show them we won't so easily dance to their tune. After all the Oliver, like, Hi, shit. Uh, what is that thing? The Makaba Unit 2? Wait, no, it's... What? Was it always that crazy huge? Hmm? 
Here they come. Now I didn't see Victor. Yeah. So Looks Victor like may actually really be dead, which is kind of what now. I always felt like. Like of all of those characters, who's the most expendable? It was definitely Victor. But did you just gold sphere? Tobo, what the fuck? <laughs> the hell'd you guys come from? Hot damn. Talk about crashing a party. Fear not. Your salvation has arrived. Patrick. Oh, Reen, your glasses. And not just you him. You can't fight without your glasses. Shara! That's right. I hope you haven't gotten into too much trouble without me. Sorry for dropping in out of the blue. I imagine it must be confusing for those of you I haven't met. My name is Sherizard Harvey, but some of you might know me better as the Liberlian Bracer Guild's Silver Streak. You're back, and just in the nick of time, too. I mean, Sherry sure getting introduced properly is kind of cool. We heard you'd been missing for some time. Definitely so you're okay cooler after than all. fucking bringing Oliver back. Seems so, though she's certainly not the only familiar face to drop in. I have to say, you two are the last people I would have expected to show up. Ha-ha! <laughs> you should know this by now. Where the spotlight goes, so too shall I. Better late than never, I suppose. This should help even the scales. Phantom Thief B? Huh, impressive. They use some kind of magic to stop the big guy here in his tracks. I wish for stronger than Divine Knights. I can Knights. learn quite a bit about being an Anguis from you. Perhaps you could give me some... Private tutelage sometime. Bonk. Bonk. Oh, I'm so sorry, but I'm afraid we're not quite on the same team here, so to speak. What is even going on right now? I detect a layer to this that is beyond my comprehension. Sex Man, stuff. Man, there's a lot of things <laughs> to comment on, but now's not really the time. I don't know. You can say there's that again. There's definitely some undertones there. It seems for once we're both on the same page. <clears throat> How? How are you here? You were aboard the Courageous when it exploded. I saw it with my own eyes. <laughs> eh, who can say? Maybe Adio spared me just so I could come spoil your fun. <sighs> You're Instructor Reen's friend. I mean, just everybody embrace it. They don't even use a special Rhea, name. How you been? Good to see you too, Estelle. Joshua. I'm finally back from my little vacation in Gehenna. Toval. No way. I swear this better not just be a dream. You're okay. I can't believe it. Huh. You don't look like much of an immortal to me. Doubt you could have gotten revived. Yeah. As far as I can tell, he's just a perfectly normal guy from head to toe. Unlike us. I like you guys like changed after you getting resurrected. You're a regular ass guy like you survived a whole friggin' ship exploding? That's right. Like I said, I had Adios there looking out for me. Well, maybe not just Adios. <laughs> <laughs> well now. This doesn't quite match up with what we were told, now does it? I'm starting to think someone played a dirty little trick on us. It bears reminding that Master Toval was not the only passenger on the Courageous when it exploded. Then... That would mean... Ah, what a delight it is to know my memory lingers on in so many minds. Please, open your Arcus units and let your imagination become reality. Oliver, if you send us a fucking dick pic right now, 
<laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> most elaborate prank of all time. Muller, you like you de aged ten years. Yeah, that's see the little eye patch he has. You'll have to excuse my aesthetic augmentation. Rest assured, before you sits the very same devilish rogue you've always known. Poor Laura. No victor in sight. Yeah. Looks like they've got a few branch campus kids tagging along too. What do you mean he wasn't popular enough to bring back from the dead? This is bullshit. Unbelievable. <laughs> Looks like his highness has got us beat. Indeed. One might say he utterly outplayed us. It's been a good while, Ring. I see you've gone through a bit of a makeover yourself. And just like yours truly, you're all the sexier for it, you handsome little rascal, you. Your Highness, I... I can't believe it. You're really alive. But how? What in the world happened back then? That's what we want to know. Why didn't you tell us? Because you can't be trusted to keep a secret, Estelle. Do you have any idea how we felt when they came to Laburl and told us you blew up? I can only imagine. And for that, I cannot apologize enough. The circumstances which forced me to secrecy were as entangling as a rose bush, and twice as prickly. Ah, but what does it matter? No remorse could hold us from the blooming jubilation of this long awaited reunion of ours. <laughs> we can't argue with you there. Though I suppose this explains why Sheriff went off the radar. Pretty much. I happen to randomly stumble upon some info about his survival. That was why I had to cut off all contact. We couldn't have information like that leaking out to just anyone. Not only for Olivier's sake, but the Courageous Twos as well. Well, I guess that makes sense, but... Oh, sorry, Reen. We kind of cut you off there, huh? Not at all. Honestly, I'm still trying to wrap my mind around all this. I didn't expect to see you here either, Major Michael. Much less you, Lieutenant Colonel Mueller. <laughs> this is what I meant when I said I had plans of my own. It's been a fair bit longer for us, though, hasn't it, Schwarzer? A shame I couldn't say this sooner, but I'd like to thank you for all you've done for Kurt. Mueller! Thank goodness you're all right. When I heard the Seventh got disbanded, I didn't know what to think. Ah, Kurt, there you are. I can tell you've gotten stronger since I last saw you. But I think it's best we set our family gathering aside for the time being. I just like to imagine Lori just fucking mauling back in the cockpit. Indeed. Like, what about, what about my dad, please? Anyone who's gonna <sighs> at least mention him? Come on, man. If that doesn't turn you over to the evil, like, nothing will. Like, if Darth, Laura, it comes into play, it would be completely justified. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe it. You survived after all. I'm so relieved. Oh, fuck off. But I regret to inform you, Operation Jormungand is already underway. The same goes for that brazen Neil Mirage scheme. So tell me, Olivert. What could you possibly hope to accomplish with that overblown ship of yours at this point? <laughs> if I may hazard.
hazard a guess, perhaps he's here to join Meal Mirage. Alas, no. With Muse, Cassius, and all the other presiding dignitaries involved, Meal Mirage is in as good a set of hands as can be. I, or rather we, have appeared before you today for one reason, and one reason only. To serve as the wings upon which deliverance to a third path is granted. <laughs> Jormungand and Mil Mirage. Two massive operations of unavoidable consequence. Yet amidst these titans is another force. Those unyielding in their hope that the twilight will soon give way to the dawn. Reen, Lloyd, and Estelle, and each of their companions that walk this path with them. Not to mention a multitude of others, all ready to lend aid to their cause. Across the continent, people of all walks are making the decision to follow their hearts. Thus, so too shall we so that our wings may help them soar. And soaring high above the holds of Erebonia's curse, we will join together as one to become the radiant rays of hope, piercing through the oppressive darkness of despair. Man, I'm glad that, that we get an Oliver speech. I hereby name us. Even not though the crimson wings I absolutely of the Civil hate War, nor the uh, winds of freedom being brought on the back. Front. But our third and greatest title, the Radiant Wings. Now I kind of have to assume that, you know, Your Highness. Victor had something to do with them being able to live, right? I mean, that was like my initial theory, right? That Oliver and Tobal are not ever going to die, um, but Victor could. And so I'm assuming that's like a homage to him. The Radiant Wings, be. huh? Not a bad name. <laughs> it has a lovely ring to it, doesn't it? <laughs> Didn't even take you five minutes to flip the whole damn script on us. <laughs> Finer words have never been spoken, O oh, eternal rival of mine. Who boy. The dead keep cropping up one by one. We really screwed the pooch here, huh? Then why don't we go ahead and make things right? This little charade ends here. Members of the society, exterminate them all. I mean, that seems like easier said than done. What? Your Highness! Seriously? Haven't you had enough yet? <laughs> well, why not? I'm always up for a bit of slaughter and destruction. And there's nothing quite like putting a damper on someone's parade. <laughs> I suppose we couldn't expect it to hold forever. Don't tell me. It's engaging spatial annihilation. The Type Beta is switching to high speed mode as well. <laughs> now you've done it! Enough chit chat. Time to say goodbye. It would seem they aren't bluffing. Stop this at once, Cedric. Why are you still doing this? Oliver just came back to us. Don't you see, Elfin? That's exactly why I must do this. I'm just as glad as you to see him alive again. But feelings such as that are only for the weak. What? We're ending this world and creating a new order in its place. And in undertaking this great, leaves me no room for weakness. Chancellor Osborne entrusted me with a mission, and I swear, by my hand, I will carry it through. I believe you've actually done quite enough for now, your highness. What? 
Why are you such a little loser boy? Huh? That voice. My, my. Speak of the devil. Chancellor Osborne! Father. Rufus, too. Instructor Claire. Even you? What do you mean, even you? <laughs> I come to you today from the Imperial Capital. You'll have to excuse me for not attending in person. As for my fellow world leaders, President Rocksmith, Prince Albert, Princess Claudia, my warmest greetings to you all. <laughs> You're the last person I expected to make an appearance here today. Our greetings to you as well. A shame we couldn't meet under better circumstances. I must apologize for not giving you prior notice of our visit. Shut up, Chloe. Tell him to fuck not off. Not at all, your highness. This airspace is a neutral zone. No permission is needed from the Erebonian government to enter it. Lieutenant General Cassius Bright. Just how long has it been? Since your surprise visit to Liberal? About three years. Though it appears your people have been fervently active in our regional capitals in your stead. You flatter me. Our work is nothing compared to that of your team from RNA Research. Are they talking about the Erebonian Intelligence Division? Yeah. Richard and the others have been struggling to counter their efforts. I see the special support section has chosen to attend as well. I do hope our dear Rufus isn't causing you too many difficulties. He's just lucky Lloyd hasn't gotten a chance to smack him one-on-one -on -one yet. Here or there, perhaps. Though I would very much like to establish a better working relationship with them wherever we can. What a barefaced liar. It's a pleasure to meet you again, Your Excellency. Why can't- why won't nobody just tell them to go fuck themselves? Like, dude's literally trying to end the world. Oh, let's pretend to be fucking nice. I can't help but be reminded of our conversation at Orcus Tower two years back. Ah, uh, yes. When we spoke of the resolve needed in trying times. How very nostalgic. And last, but certainly not least, Prince Oliver, my deepest apologies. I scarcely realized just how gravely I'd underestimated you. I imagine even the Duchess and her cohorts must share in my sentiment. <laughs> Indeed. It would seem I'm not as keen as I thought myself to be. That's quite enough flattery for today, Your Excellency. As it currently stands, we can no longer stop either one of these grand operations from commencing. And yet, as I've already declared, we will continue on as the Wings of Passage. For Reen, Lloyd, Estelle, and every one of their allies. What do you think like, the random pilots are doing right now? Like, they just like had to stop shooting so that all the more important people can like stand around and talk? <laughs> for like an hour? For I know in my heart of hearts. Oh, shit, we're gonna run out of fuel. We've been idling here for very end. two days. Your Highness. If we weren't sure of ourselves before, we definitely are now. <laughs> He's trying way too hard to sound cool. Be my guest. You may flit around as much as you please. But know this. You have only six days before Operation Jormungand makes its move. Huh? As one of the authors behind this plan, allow me to issue a declaration. The order to commence Operation Jormungand will be officially given at the stroke of noon on the 1st of September. <sighs> D-Day. The start of the Great War. Indeed. And preceding it, an omen of epic proportions to which the entire continent will bear witness. The harbinger of the end of the world. The Great Twilight. The same day will also mark the beginning of the rivalry of the Seven. Jaeger King Rutger Klossel 
I hope you are prepared. Sure am. And what of you, Seventh Anguis of Ouroboros, Arian Road the Steel Maiden? Oh, yo, what I up? I'm no here. Objections. <laughs> I must admit, I'm I deeply get any cell interested service out in here. how you all managed to escape that explosion. But I can wait until a more appropriate time to satisfy my curiosity. <laughs> Bro, I promise I planted the bomb perfectly and everything, man. Then it's true. Yeah. Though I bet the Phantom Thief had something to do with it. Now, if I may have your attention, everyone. I'd like to present two individuals who deserve some recognition for their contributions to the rivalries. Mother! And Professor Schmidt, too? So when you said you were leaving on business... I fucking lied! Haha! <laughs> Hello. I suspect this comes to you as somewhat of a surprise. Oh, Chairman Irina being evil? Oh no, gosh, I could have never seen this coming. But I simply assisted with an off-the-record request from the Erebonian government. That is all. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, I was just doing... I was just doing business. Miss Kreuz, the professor and I have completed fine-tuning the device, as you asked. Uh. <laughs> Marvelous! The both of you have my utmost appreciation. Ah, 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 ah. You can save your empty gratitude for someone else. I am simply working toward my own goals. Nothing more. Uh, what exactly are you planning, Bell? Allow me to make one final introduction to our roster. One not even we expected. And yet, one that will surely prove instrumental in setting the stage for the rivalries. Oh, uh -huh. now that you mention it, I haven't seen McFirebro around in a while. Yo, you called? Man, I love it when there's a time limit. Really gets the blood pumping, you feel me? What do you mean you're not when you expected? But I ain't the star here. Hey, come on out already. Hmm. <gasps> no way. Oh, did they put him a mask on him? <laughs> so is he? He is. <gasps> they did. V Viscount Arsaid. So this is what became of you. I was curious how and where you'd managed okay. to wander off after losing your left arm. His left arm. Father. So you've turned even the Radiant Blade Master into one of your puppets, then? I mean, honestly, real talk, probably would have been better for them to like let him die, considering how easy it is to break the masks. That would be wrong, for I am no puppet. I am Victor S. Arsaid. I have lost neither my memories nor my sense of self. It brings me no small pain for us to meet again like this, Cassius. Perhaps, but it's no small delight to know you're still alive as well. I can only assume this is the curse compelling you against your will. Huh? Know something we don't, old man? A similar case occurred in Liberal three years ago. In Phantasma. We encountered artificial copies of people who had the same memories and personalities as the originals. They're gonna connect that to the curse too? That doesn't make any damn sense. You're trying to tell me it's happening all over again? No, that was in the Recluse Cube. What we have here in Erebonia is something on a far greater scale than that. Okay. Yeah, the curse is forcing Mr. Viscount to do whatever it wants him to. How is that any different than them just putting a mask on him? He's the strongest sword master in the empire. I mean, I guess that means you can't That's break the why mask. That's he was chosen to set the stage for the rivalries. Precisely, all to create the best possible conditions for the resurrection of the Great One. But I mean, I don't know. He's only got one arm. What the fuck is he gonna do? Oh, oh I'm gonna swing my sword at you. Whatever. So that's how it works. It's almost as though the curse has a consciousness, a will of its own. No, father. So his skills as one of the greatest swordsmen on the continent are being used against him. I washed. There's no need for anguish. 
These are nothing more than the whims of fate. When next we meet, it will be as heralds of the rivalries. Reen, Laura, I expect you to put forth your very best when the time comes to pit steel against steel. Catch you when the fun finally starts. We'll be waiting. Alrighty, guess we'd best head out ourselves. Best of luck, Miss Maiden. If I see you again, it'll be between my crosshairs. Very well. I will await that moment with bated breath. You got, you got no fucking chance, dude. Ines, Anea, return to me. I will require you at my side once more. Yes, my lord. Like, I mean, imagine getting your blade cracked by, like, Yuna and Kurt, and then you're like, yeah, I can take Aryan Road. Fucking loser. As you wish. Ha! <laughs> Busy times ahead for all of us, huh? Our final battlefield draws near. The very thought is enough to make the blood stir. Just what kind of farce do all of you take this for? We aren't finished here! Not by a long shot! Who do you think you are, deserting your duty? What do you mean they don't respect me? I thought if I acted like a little worm, they'd, uh, they'd, they'd love me. Sorry, kid. We got our priorities. <laughs> That's quite enough, your highness. The task you were given was a greeting, a show of formality and nothing further. Evidently, you have failed to understand that. I have to warn you against overstepping your bounds. Or must I remind you of your position as an iron blood? <coughs> your highness. Uh, uh, now, now, let us leave the matter at this. Return to Heimdall for now, your highness. There yet remains an important role you must play. Understood. I gotta slurp up your soul like a milkshake, my boy. <laughs> Boss, Zeno, Leo. My lord. Ouch! That princey boy is gonna sulk on that one for weeks. Looks like the party's over now. What a shame. I was having so much fun. I do hate to cut our engagement short, but I believe it's time we made our exit. Understood. Anticlimactic to introduce like See the ion around, ions guys. and everything and then not fight them. But... <laughs> Continue on with your struggle, vain as it may be. I want to relish making you squirm before we finish you off for good. Translation Oh fuck. Oh shit, we were gonna fucking lose. We gotta make a dramatic uh, proclamation and pretend we won. <laughs> the classic or boy strategy. Now, if you'll excuse us. Enhance Jaeger Brigade, fall back! Get moving! Belle, just how far will you take this? Bro, she's evil. Get over it. You got tricked, Ellie. You got fucking played. First Sharon, and now Mother too? Guess we won't be settling the score this time around. We'll go ahead and see ourselves out too. Hmm. George! So you're gonna leave without saying a single thing, again. Don't worry, we'll be able to settle things soon. But don't expect any mercy from me when that happens. Georg, I'm sorry, you're a joke. <laughs> right, real convincing. George, or would you prefer I call you Georg? Either way, I owe you my thanks. You can keep them. Farewell. Man, that guy really isn't cut out for this. Yeah, he's gonna get like a super spanking back home. <laughs> Look who's talking. Exactly. You're no different. Whoa. Didn't realize you guys were keeping demons up in that ship. <laughs> oh, Lecter. 
I can only guess who you're referring to. Still, it really is wonderful to see you again. It's been so long since we last met at the trade conference. I won't even bother scolding you anymore, Lecter. All I ask is that you promise me one thing. That we'll still have a class reunion, no matter how this all ends. Oh, it's okay. You just like try to kill, like, you know, in the world and kill everybody. Oh, it's water under the bridge. Leo wants just the same. Jill and Hans do too. Sheesh. You guys just can't learn to let it go, can you? Fine. I'll bite. Now, making a promise cost me nothing, after all. You just gotta promise me that you survive long enough to get there. Of course. The same goes for you. I'll be waiting, with a fist curled and ready to knock some sense back into you. So be prepared! I'm glad everyone was able to have this chance to see each other one last time. With this period of relative peace nearing its end, may each of us give every last ounce of our strength in the coming days. And Reen, you have a decision to make. Will you give in to your cursed destiny? Rebel against your fate? Will you simply flee? I feel like you already made that decision, like, a while back. Or will you continue to struggle with every fiber of your being until you have seen this abyss of despair through to the end? <laughs> Whether we'll ever meet again, I can't say for sure. But if we do, I guarantee you'll have no doubt about which path I've taken. <laughs> My goodness. His Excellency certainly is impulsive. Farewell, everyone. May you enjoy what little time you have left before the end of days is upon us. I pray that you all have a safe journey home. Be assured that neither the Imperial Army nor Ouroboros will interfere with your return. On that note, you are also free to go and visit His Majesty at his bedside, should you so desire. As for you, Lloyd, I have temporarily suspended your arrest warrant. I imagine you'd like a chance to visit those dear to you. Far be it from me to hold you from your final farewells. I'm just saying, do you want Lloyd in your office beating your ass? Because that's how you get Lloyd in your office beating your ass. <gasps> Wait, really? <laughs> Think of it as my personal apology to you for Operation Birdcage. We will be recalling our troops from Michelin as well. Why don't you enjoy yourselves there, one last time? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, that's just so funny to him, to me. He'd be like, go uh, ride a roller coaster, see ya, for the end of the world. I'd like to thank you for the consideration. Though not half as much as I'd like to deck you in the face! Oh god, Lloyd, he's based! Finally, someone's just like, fuck you. I'm not gonna be nice. Thank you for not talking to me, Claire. You finally listened to me whenever I, I keep telling you don't talk to me. She <sighs> finally listened. Uh, Instructor Claire. No, oh, fuck her. They're always so difficult to get through to. That's because they're bad. Well, this has been a most productive encounter. I don't know if I trust them to not interfere with our return, so we'll be taking our leave as soon as possible. I wish you all the best of luck in the coming days. May each of us do our utmost, no matter what path we've chosen. I shall find a way to pay my respects to his majesty before setting a course back home. Tell you, they're gonna run out of fuel, and they're gonna crash on the way back. With that, farewell for now. Princess Alfin, Lady Mildine, and General Le Guin, congratulations on rallying so many to your side this day. As for Reen, Lloyd, Estelle, and all the rest, May Adios give you her blessing, wherever your endeavors might take you. And once again, Prince Oliver, I can't express enough how much of a relief it is to see you alive. <laughs> Always a pleasure brightening your day with a bit of bewilderment. And Cassius, though we walk different paths for now, perhaps we could meet for a drink one day. I imagine Zinn would be eager to join. Ha! I'll be sure to take you up on that. 
Estelle, Joshua, Ren, Sherazard, Agate, Tita. We shall meet again. Take care of yourselves, as well as each other. For sure. We may not be on the same team exactly, but good luck all the same, Dad. <laughs> you better not get beat by some Imperial hotshot, you got it? You can leave any matters in Erebonia to me. I'll make sure to be close in touch with Sarah. The Society's at work all over the continent. Be careful out there, Dad. I think, is Sarah the only character that hasn't had a single line of dialogue this entire section? Because even, even Maki has got a, little, got a little line in there. I don't think Emma said anything. I mean, I guess technically she's not here on the deck, but I mean, even Maki has got his line in. We'll let you know if we discover anything about their plans. Yeah, I think Emma and Sarah never talked. Be careful, Mr. Bright. You too, Chloe. Oh, that was way too intense. Agreed. Not just the battles themselves, but the entire situation. Yeah. Having the fate of the entire continent at stake can get a little overwhelming. Huh. Don't go wussing out on us just yet. We're finally in the home stretch. Yes, that we are. Oh, Muse. You changed your clothes back. Yeah, how'd you find time to do that? So I have. I suppose we should count ourselves lucky things ended up as nice as they did. Oh, I swear. Muse? You don't really think your signature sweet smile will be enough for us to forgive you, do you? You wanted to die, so we're gonna throw you off the ship. Huh? I was about to ask just the same. Yeah, she deserves a slap. You were about to play some real wild shit back there, weren't you? You know, if you really want to be Estelle Jr., you would slap her. I'm just saying. Just so you know, we overheard your conversation on the bridge. I need to have more than just a few words with you, as your instructor. Yes, Instructorine. That was strangely meek of her. What, you sick or something? More so than usual, I mean. <laughs> all right, all right, you're on the path to getting out of the butler uniform. I'd say she realized she went a bit too far this time around. Though perhaps we're partially to blame for all the pressure we've placed upon her. <laughs> Such is the folly of youth, wouldn't you say? Oliver, it pleases us all to have you grace us in good health, your highness. Huh? I can't hear you. We're not using the intercoms anymore. So like, I can't hear you because we're really far away. There's a lot of wind blowing around. You'll have to direct your thanks to the many others who helped this come to pass. Our end game is nigh, Reen. Should you wish it, my wings are prepared to lift you to a new path. Uh. <laughs> you would be our honor, your highness. But before that, on behalf of us all, welcome back. It's good to be back. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, Liberlians, Crossbellans, and Erebonians alike, welcome aboard the second successor of the high-speed cruiser Arsay. The Courageous Two! I'm alright. I don't know, mixed feelings on that whole section overall. Yay! Your rank went up! The main thing that is very good, I love the length of it. The fact that it's just like, it's a fucking hour long is awesome. Here's a gift from Her Highness. Big fan. Honestly, like, it really, I mean, it had big vibes of, you know, the, uh, uh the scene in Sky 2, right? When they, they meet on the border and everything. Like, this extended, long, diplomatic exchange, kind of, with, like, a lot of different cross characters and, you know, Oliver's plan being revealed and everything. Very similar to that, but, you know, just even, like, way blown up. Like, essentially just a better version of... CS2's rescue from the Panzer Girl. Um, so, like, that's the good. The bad, of course, Oliver being resurrected. Even though, yes, of course, I knew it was going to happen, blah, blah, blah. I absolutely hate it. 
I think it's just such bad, like, storytelling. And it's kind of insulting after spending all that time pretending he was dead as well. Um, like, kind of having those scenes, it just feels so emotionally manipulative um, that I just don't like it at all. And it, it's really the problem, essentially the problem with Fake Out Dash is that they weaken any future attempts, right? Like, I mean, the whole thing with, like, Muse pretending she's going to sacrifice herself is just like, sh like, don't even, don't even add this fake drama when you know they're not going to commit. Like... Oh, wow! You really outdid yourselves! I just think that, like, I don't know. Oliver's death would have had a ton of meaning, and just kind of going back on it sucks. I mean, it's the same, basically all the same issues I have with Crow, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. So, some other good stuff about it, though, just... I mean, one of the things that did it is the whole, like... I do think they've kind of gone to the extreme with the whole, like, let's redeem everyone. Nobody's a bad person. We can save everyone uh, stuff. Like, I mean, it's, it is a theme of the series, but um, I just wish people would be fucking mad at least a little bit. Like, I just want, I just want a little bit of freaking righteous anger every once in a while. I don't know. I'm trying to think anything else. But like overall, good. It's good. Just really soured on the whole Oliver thing. I don't know. I just I can't agree with pretending to kill off a major character and then kind of making a big deal out of it and then being like, haha, they're back. I don't know. It just feels really cheap. Even if, yes, you know, you're supposed to like you know, of course you should know that he's not gonna really be dead, but that's the issue, right? And I think it kind of retroactively makes CS3's ending worse. Like, I mean, I kind of said back at the time that a lot of my opinion on that ending will be based on how much they commit to the Oliver and Milliam deaths. Because that's what gave that ending any sort of, like, emotional impact. And so then being like, nah, actually, they're perfectly fine. No big deal. I just, I can't get behind it. And I feel like you basically kind of made your story worse just for the sake of, like, fan service. It's kind of how I felt, I mean, basically the exact same way I felt about Crow being brought back. Where it's like you've weakened your story just for the sake of, like, hey, Crow's around, you can, like, hang out with him again. But yeah, we'll uh, move on to Act 3 next time. I'm ExtraCheesy87. Stay tuned for the next part. And bye, guys.